Chapter 2, Analyzing the External Environment of the Firm, Creating Competitive Advantage. The learning objective of these chapters are the importance of developing forecasts of the business environment, why uh, environmental scanning, environmental monitoring and collecting competitive intelligence are critical inputs to forecasting, and why scenario planning is a useful technique for firms competing in industry uh, characterized by unpredictability and change, the impact of the gender environment on firm strategies and performance, and how forces in the competitive environment can affect profitability, how a firm can improve its competitive position by increasing its power vis-a-vis -vis these forces, and the concept of strategic groups and their strategy in performance, implication. Why do we think that external environment is important to the organization? Okay, it is important because uh, as a manager, you must recognize the opportunity and threat in the firm's external environment. So by studying the external environment, it would help the company to sustain in the industry. Okay, so the best CEO and always aware of what's going on outside the company. So this uh, behavior or attitude, what we call perceptual equity, will allow them to send what is coming next. So detecting the, detecting the early warning signals will keep uh, the company alert to the changes in the external environment and this actually will help the company to sustain uh, to remain competitive in the industry okay even you you can compete uh, with other market sorry with the uh, existing competitor in the same market or if you let's say you want to venture into the new market then you can afford to compete with the new market Uh, how to enhance awareness of the external environment. So what do you think? How can the managers become environmentally aware? So it is by doing scanning, monitoring and gathering the competitive intelligence and uh, by using this input to develop their focus. So actually CEO can get together with their teams to discuss what's new, what is new and what is uh, going on in the world. And on uh, other thing that can be done is uh, CEO can examine the world from a different perspective, multiple perspective. And uh, they can share their thinking about how different maybe, how different trends may be uh, developed. Okay, and company uh, can also ask the outsiders to critique their strategy. So this can be done during the their board strategy session, for example. So after that, uh, the uh, SWOT analysis can be prepared and uh, can be used to help uh, to anticipate these major, anticipate the major future changes in the external environment. This is to prepare the firm to do more extensive analysis of the forces in the general environment and the industry or competitive environment. We will now uh, look at the three important processes, scanning, monitoring and gathering competitive intelligence, which can be used to develop forecasts. So first thing is environmental scanning. Environmental scanning actually is a surveillance of a firm's external environment to predict the environmental changes and to detect the changes that is already underway. So a leading firm, for example, uh, can be the indicators of emerging trend. And this will alert uh, the firm to critical trend and event before changes have developed a discernible pattern and uh, before competitors can recognize them. While the environmental monitoring is a firm analysis of the external environment that track the evolution of trend, uh, evolution of environmental trend, and sequences of event or stream of activity. 
So uh, by monitoring the trend that have the potential to change the competitive landscape, uh, so firms need to choose the trend that identified via the scanning activity earlier and uh, regularly monitor or track this specific trend uh, to evaluate the impact of their trends on their strategy. So, for example, Johnson & Johnson uh, tracking percentage of GDP spent on healthcare or number of active hospital bed. Um, the third uh, process is competitive intelligence. Okay, what is uh, competitive intelligence? It's a firm activities of collecting and interpreting data on competitors. Defining and understanding the industry. Okay, so actually, a CI help firms define and understand the industry and identify the rival strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so this will include the intelligence gathering associated with collecting data on competitors and interpreting, uh, interpreting such data. And if you done it properly, the competitive intelligence will help a company to avoid surprises by anticipating competitors' move and decreasing response time. So the potential, however, um, you got to be careful during this stage because if you are too aggressive in collecting, uh, uh, doing a, sorry during the competitive intelligence stage, this might lead to unethical or illegal behavior. Environmental scanning, monitoring and competitive intelligence are important inputs for analyzing the external environment. So environmental forecasting involves the development of plausible projections about the direction, scope, speed and intensity of environmental change. So actually its purpose is to predict the change. What is plausible projection about is the direction of environmental change, the scope of environmental change, the speed of environmental change, and the intensity of environmental change. So, uh, if you look at the scenario analysis, uh, it is involved detailed assessment of the way trends may affect an issue and development of alternative future based on this assessment. Uh, once environmental scanning, monitoring, intelligence gathering and forecasting have been done, the firms must do a more in-depth analysis to see how all this affects its strategy. So the SWOT analysis, uh, which is actually a framework for analyzing a company internal and external environment, and uh, that is actually stand for uh, strength, weaknesses, opportunity and threat. So, uh, the firm strength comes from within and uh, where your firm excel. Okay, and the weaknesses are where your firm is lacking relatively to competitors. And the opportunities and threat can come from the general environment and or from the specific industries, competitive environment. So, uh, the SWOT analysis forces managers to consider both internal and external factors simultaneously. So, this will make firms act, uh, proactively and a firm can raise the awareness about the role of the strategy. So, a firm's uh, strategy must be built on its strength, remedy the weaknesses of work around them and take the advantage of the opportunity presented by the environment. And the company also need to protect their firm from the threat. Now, uh, let us look at the general environment. So, what is general environment? It is composed of factors that are both hard to predict and difficult to control. It is actually the external factors to an industry. And usually, it is beyond a firm's control that will affect a firm's strategy. Although uh, the effect of these factors can vary across industry, every industry has to anticipate uh, the effect of each factor on its firm long-term strategies. You can refer to Exhibit 2.3 for the impact of these various trends on certain industries. So in addition, uh, there are many reciprocal relationships among the various elements. Uh, 
the general environment have been divided into six segments, which is which are the demographic segment, social cultural segment, political or legal segment, technological, economic and global segment. Let us look at the first segment of gender environment, which is demographic. Demographic are the most easily understood and quantifiable elements of the gender environment. They are at the root of many changes in society. So demographic actually includes elements such as the aging population, rising or declining affluence, changes in ethnic composition, geography distribution of the population, as well as the disparity in income level. So if you look at the impact of demographic trend, like all segments of the gender environment varies across industry. The rising level of affluence in many developed countries actually is a good sign uh, for, for example, brokerage services as well as for the high skill business. However, if this trend may adversely affect the small restaurant because people now can afford to dine in at higher price restaurant. And if you want to look at the aging population, for example, is it suitable, uh, is it suitable for the uh, McDonald's to be open in Lendu? If there is no UITM here, do you think is it suitable? Because looking at the aging population here, so of course you think that uh, it shouldn't be open because all, only old people around Lendu. Okay, so now uh, when there is UITM, uh, we think that it is okay or it is good if McDonald want to be open somewhere around here. So that's why if we look at uh, the situation or the current environment now, you have KFC, McDonald, that is actually due to the opening of UITM last time. Okay, and if you want to discuss about the changes in ethnic composition, okay, uh, let's say you want to look at uh, McDonald, the burger itself, okay. Uh, there is an issue in India last time where at the, be at the beginning of the opening of uh, McDonald, uh, the people in India is not happy because they provide the beef. Okay, so therefore they try to change and uh, adapt to the situation in uh, India. Uh, they can change to other type of burger. Okay, so that's why you have to take in into consideration the demographic factors before you want to start off your business. Okay, even the population and the, the, the distribution of population. If not many people, uh, young people stay here. Okay. Or whether it is suitable. Last time in India, it's only uh, McDonald only open in in a few uh, town. Okay, just because of the geographic distribution problem. Okay, and if we look at the uh, income level, for example, okay, the income level also plays an important role eh, uh, in order for you to uh, look at the uh, factors that uh, will affect your business whether it is suitable or not for you to uh, open a business in uh, one area so you have to take the consideration of these demographic factors uh, now let us look at the second segment of the gender environment which is socio-cultural socio-cultural actually uh, forces influence the value belief and lifestyle of a society so, for example, if you include a higher percentage of women in the workplace or dual income families, increases in the number of temporary workers, greater concern for healthy diet and physical fitness, greater interest in the environment and postponement of having children. Uh, well, all that uh, will enhance the sales of products and services in many industries. However, it might depress the sales in the others, so this, uh, the increased number of women, for example, in the workplace has increased the need for business, clothing, merchandise, but it will decrease the demand for maybe baking product. Okay, so if you look at other industry, the health and fitness trend, it's helped the um, 
industry, uh, the manufacturer, eh, uh, who manufacture the exercise equipment and the helpful food. But at the same time, it may harm the industries that produce the unhealthy product. Okay, you may take a look at the uh, other example as well if you greatly concern for the environment and postponement of marriage and family formation as well. Next is political and legal segment. Political and legal segment is process and legislation influence environmental regulation with which industries must comply. So if we look at political segment, it's referred to the role of government in shaping the business. This includes elements such as tech policies, changes in trade restriction and tariff, and the stability of government. And uh, uh, under the legal segment, it is actually look at how the courts influence the business activities. Okay, for example, important legal factors include uh, employment laws, health and safety regulation, and the discrimination laws. In fact, the government uh, may encourage on or discourage the entry of foreign company in India markets. Eh? Company will uh, avoid entering uh, any geographic market uh, or geographic segment in which government that cannot ensure the rule of law. They will feel fear to political instability and want to know if the host country uh, policies would be consistent or would they change with the change in the government. So it's just like what is happening in our country today. When we discuss the technological segment, which is uh, looking at the improvement in product and services that are provided by science. Okay? The relevant factors include, uh, for example, changes in the rate of new product development, uh, increases in automation and advancement in service industry delivery. Uh, they can create the new industries and alter the existing one, like this genetic uh, engineering, the 3D, uh, printing, uh, computer-aided design or manufacturing, research in synthetic and exotic materials, pollution, global warming, miniaturization of computing technologies, wireless communication, nanotechnology, uh, and also big data analysis. Uh, one key feature uh, of the modern era is actually uh, I think is the ever uh, increasing pace of technological innovation. Okay, so we can see that innovation and state of knowledge in industrial art, engineering, applied science, pure science, and their interaction with society. For instance, uh, physiolactic, uh, which is linking uh, wearable computing devices with data analysis and quantified feedback to improve performance. We can also look at uh, some trend or even event that can affect multiple segments of the gender environment. Uh, for example, data analytics. Okay? The process of examining large data set to uncover the hidden pattern. Uh, we examine the market trend and the customer's preferences. So, uh, cooperation uh, are increasingly collecting and analyze data on their customers, including data on customers' characteristics, purchasing pattern, employee productivity, and physical asset utilization. And this is commonly known as big data, which uh, have the potential to enable firms to better uh, customize the product and service offering to customers. Yeah, while more efficiently and fully using the resources of the company. So you can look at the Spotlight 2.3 for how data analysis can make government to be more transparent. The economic segment focus on the economic condition within which organization operates. So it includes elements such as interest rate, inflation rate, GDP, unemployment rates, 
consumer price index, net disposable income, changes in the stock market, valuation, valuation as well. Okay, so the economic uh, crisis, for example, in the late 2000, has had a tremendous uh, negative effect to the organization. Eh? Rising unemployment discouraged consumers from purchasing expensive non-essential goods such as auto mobiles. The bank failure at that time led to a um, tightening of credit markets. And if you look at the uh, interest rate increases have a negative impact on the residential home construction industry but a uh, negligible or neutral effect on industries that produce consumer necessities such as prescription drugs or common grocery items. The last segment under the general environment is global segment. So global segment of forces offer both opportunity and risks. It is it is uh, influences uh, from foreign country, including foreign market opportunity, foreign based competition, and expanded capital markets. Eh? Globalization uh, provide both opportunity to access larger potential markets and a broad base of production factors, such as raw material, labor, key managers, and technical professionals. But uh, we can uh, take Starbucks as an example. Uh, if we look at Starbucks, uh, the company study the global uh, segment before enter into our market in Malaysia. Okay, so they look at the opportunity that we provide. Okay, they look at our market here, uh, the trend of people here. So uh, after they study about the uh, nature or about the uh, factors or things, uh, the interest of uh, people in Malaysia. Okay, so they start the thing that they can do the business in Malaysia. So of course they will uh, bring together uh, this what we call uh, political. They will look at the social and also the economic risks together before they enter into the business. And uh, the most important trend to track is the rapid rise of the middle class in emerging market. Country, eh? So this not only does this have implication for customer growth, but it also increases the need for multinational firms to hire for overseas jobs. So now we have to look at the relationship uh, between the elements under the general environments. Okay, uh, firms uh, must pay attention to factors in the general environment for few reasons. Not only uh, do these elements interact with each other, uh, but also the effect of trend or uh, event in the general environment uh, that can vary across industry. If you look at Exhibit 2.3 for how this may play out in different industry sector. For example, uh, one technology phenomena alters the way business is conducted is data analytics which is the process of examining a large data set, uh, which has been explained earlier. Uh, this is to uncover the hidden pattern, market trend and customer preferences. And this activity actually links technology with globalization eh? and also the social, cultural, uh, socio cultural and economic forces. So it is an uh, effect on nearly every business uh, domain. So, company that are taking the lead in the analytics revolution will see it as an important source of competitive depreciation. And this brings 26% more profitable uh, compared to their uh, competitors in the industry. What is a competitive environment? Uh, it is actually in addition to the general environment within which all firms compete. Each firm must also pay attention to competitive environment. So it consists of factors in the tax or industry environment that are particularly relevant to a firm strategies. 
we will look at the competitors, customers as well as the suppliers. Industry is actually a group of firms that produce similar goods or services. I guess everyone knows about this and familiar with this. And uh, one interesting concept is a forward integration here. Eh? A form of vertical integration whereby a firm expand activities to include a control of the direct distribution of its product. For example, uh, like a farmer uh, sell his or her crop at the local market rather than to distribute uh, it to the distribution center or even uh, uh, sell it to a supermarket. So now let us continue with Porter's five fossil model of industry competition. What is actually a Porter's five fossil model? It is a tool for examining the industry level competition environment. Uh, it is especially when uh, you want to look at the ability of the firms in that industry, one particular industry, to set the prices and to minimize the cost. Uh, this will include uh, five uh, basic competitive forces, which are the uh, threat of new entrant, bargaining power of buyers, bargaining power of suppliers, the threat of substitute product and services, the intensity of rivalry among competitors in an industry. Each of these forces uh, will affect a firm's ability to compete in a one particular market. So uh, they together determine the profit potential for a particular industry. As a manager, uh, you should be familiar with that uh, five process model for several reasons because it would help you to decide whether your firm should remain in the industry or exit the industry. It will provide the rationale for increasing or decreasing the resource commitments. Eh? And this model will help you to assess how to improve your firm's competitive position with regard to each of the five process. Let's see, uh, you can use insight provided by the 5 possible model to understand how uh, higher entry barriers discourage new rival from competing with you. Or you can see how to develop strong relationship with your distribution channel. You may decide to find suppliers who satisfy the price or performance criteria needed to meet your product or service at top performance. So now let us uh, look at the first uh, of the Porter's model, which is uh, the threat of new entrant. The threat of new entrants actually refer to the possibility that the profit of established firm in the industry may be eroded by new competitors. The extent of the threat depends on existing barrier to entry and uh, the combined reaction from existing competitors. So a, uh, let's say the entry barriers um, is high and the newcomers can anticipate a sharp retaliation from established competitor, then we see the threat of entry is low. Okay. The, uh, these circumstances actually discourage new competitors. Eh? Then uh, before we make a judgment, then uh, let us look at the six major sources of entry barriers. So we have to look at the economies of scale. Okay, the economies of scale refer to spreading the cost of production over the number of units that the company will produce. So the cost of a product per unit will decline as the absolute pro, uh, volume per period increases. And this deters entry by forcing the entrant to come in at a large scale and uh, wreak strong reaction risk strong reaction from existing uh, firms or come in at a small scale and accept a cost disadvantage. Uh, both is actually uh, undesirable uh, option. And we can look at the product de depreciation. So when the existing competitor have a strong brand identification and customer's loyalty, the product depreciation create a barrier to entry by forcing entrant to spend heavily to overcome existing customers' loyalty. For example, you want to come up with the same product like Samsung, Apple, and so on. You, you will 
comes in with the product differentiation but you have to remember that you need to spend highly or heavily cost okay to overcome the existing customer loyalties and another uh, factors is capital requirement so the need to invest large financial resources to compete uh, in the market creates a barrier to entry okay if you think that you want to compete with uh, mcdonald kfc pizza hut okay so you have uh, you need a, uh, to invest a large amount of financial resources okay so uh, if you don't have enough capital therefore it will stop you from enter into the industry so that's why we see the capital requirement is one of the barrier to entry okay this is especially if the capital required for risky or unrecoverable upfront advertising or research and development and you have another factors which is switching costs a barrier to entry is created by the existence of one-time costs that the buyer faces when switching from one supplier product or service to another and you also can uh, use the cost disadvantages independent of scale because some existing competitor may have advantages they are independent of size of economies of scale because it is derived from the property product favorable access to raw material government subsidies and favorable government policies Now we continue with the bargaining power of buyer. Buyers can threaten an industry by forcing down prices, bargaining for higher quality product or higher quality services and uh, playing competitors against each other. Uh, these act actions uh, actually will erode uh, industry profitability. The company profit will decline due to the power of buyer. The power of each large buyer group uh, depends on depends on uh, attributes of the market situation and the importance of purchases from that group compared with the industry's overall business. Uh, you can see that a buyer a group is powerful when uh, one it is concentrated or purchases large volume relative to seller sales. Uh, Let's say a large percentage of a supplier's sales are purchased by a single buyer, then the importance of the buyer's business to the suppliers increases. 
large volume buyers also are powerful in industry with high fixed costs. The second one is the product purchases from the industry are standard or undifferentiated. Confident they can always find alternative supplier, buyers play one company against the other as in commodity grain product. The third uh, reason is the buyer faces few switching costs. Switching costs lock the buyer to particular seller. Conversely, uh, the buyer power is enhanced if the seller faces high switching costs. Okay, and earn low profit. Low profit create incentive to lower purchasing costs. So, on the other hand, highly profitable uh, buyers are generally less price sensitive. The buyer pose a credible threat of backward integration. So, for example, if buyer either are partially integrated or pose a credible threat of backward integration, they are typically able to secure bargaining concession. And uh, another uh, point is the industry product is unimportant to the quality of the buyer product or services. <laughs> Next force is uh, the bargaining power of supplier. Suppliers can exact bargaining power by threatening to raise prices or reduce the quality of purchase, goods and services. So powerful suppliers can squeeze the profitability of firms so far that they can recover the cost of raw material input. Suppliers groups are powerful when uh, the supplier group is dominated by a few companies and is more concentrated than the industry it sells to. So suppliers selling to fragmented industry influence uh, prices, quality and terms. And the second point here is the supplier group is not obliged to contend with substitute product for sale to the industry. The power of even large powerful supplier can be checked if they compete with substitute. The industry is not an important customer of the supplier group. So when suppliers sell to several industries and a particular industry does not represent a significant fraction of its sales, supplier are more prone to exit power. The next point is the supplier product is an important input to the buyer business. So when such input are important to the success of the buyer manufacturing, manufacturing process or product quality, then the bargaining power of supplier is high. The supplier group uh, poses a credible threat of forward integration. Eh? So this provides a check against the industry ability to improve the term by which is purchases. The trend of substitute product and services. All firms within an industry compete with industries producing substitute product and services. Substitute limit the potential return of an industry by placing a ceiling on the prices that firms in that industry can profitably charge. So the more attractive the price ratio of substitute product, the tighter the lead of an industry profit. So, identifying the uh, substitute product involves searching for other products or services that can perform the same function as the industry's offering. So, these uh, uh, manager into business seemingly far removed from the industry. Okay, so for example, if we look at the airline industry, it might not consider video cameras much of a trade. But as digital technology has improved and wireless and other forms of telecommunication have become more efficient, teleconferencing has become a viable substitute for business travel. That is the rate of improvement in the price performance relationship of the substitute product is high. Finally, we look at the intensity of rivalry among competitors in an industry. Firms use tactics like price competition, advertising battles, product introduction, and increased customer service or warranties uh, to compete in the industry. So, rivalry occurs when competitors sense the pressure or act on an opportunity to improve their position. 
So uh, some form of competition such as price competition are typically highly destabilizing and are likely to erode the average level of profitability in the in the industry and eh? so uh, rival easily match price cut and action that lower profit for all firms and on the other hand advertising battle expand overall demand or enhance the level of product product differentiation for the benefit of all firms in the industry so of course rivalry differ from across industry so for instance it is characterized as warlike, bitter, cutthroat, whereas in other industry, it is referred to as polite and gentlemanly. So, intense uh, rivalry is a, actually a result of several interacting factors, which includes uh, one is numerous or equally balanced competitors. So, when uh, there are many firms in an industry, the likelihood of mavericks is Great, eh? So some firms believe that they can make move without being noticed. So even when there are relatively a few firms and they are nearly equal in size and resources, instab instability result from fighting among companies have the resources for sustained and vigorous retaliation. Another factor that lead to intense rivalry is low industry growth. Slow industry growth turn competition into a fight for a market share since firms seek to expand their sales. They need to capture more target market. Okay. And another point is high fix on storage costs. High fix costs create strong pressures for all firms to increase capacity. So excess capacity often leads to escalating price cutting. Another factor is lack of differentiation on switching costs. Uh, where the product or service is perceived as a commodity or near commodity, the buyer's choice is typically based on price and service, eh? resulting in pressure for intense price and service competition. So, lack of switching costs described earlier has the same effect. Another uh, factor is capacity augmented in large increments so where economies of scale require that capacity must be added in large increments capacity addition can be very destructive to the industry or supply industry supply or demand balance eh? and uh, finally we look at the high exit barrier so if exit barriers are economic strategy and emotional factors that keep firms competing even though they may be earning low or negative return on their investment but some exit barriers are specialized asset for example fixed cost of exit strategic interrelationship for example the relationship between the business unit and other within a company in terms of image marketing share facilities and so on uh, emotional barriers and governmental and social Precious. So, rivalry between firms is often based solely on prices, but it can involve other factors as well. Uh, this slide summarizes our discussion of industry five forces analysis. Point out how the internet and digital technologies affect the competitive forces. So we know that uh, the internet is having a significant impact, significant impact uh, on nearly every industry. Internet-based and digital technologies have fundamentally changed the way businesses interact uh, with each other, with consumers. We can use the current situation now. Okay, we are seriously use the internet and digital technologies. Okay, so in more cases, most cases, eh, these changes have affected industry forces in ways they that have created many strategic challenges. In this uh, section, uh, actually, uh, you will look at the uh, Porter's five forces model in terms of the actual use of the internet and the new technologies capability that make it possible. For example, if you look at the threat of new entrants in most industry, the threat of new entrants has increased because digital and internet technology uh, lower barrier to entry. 
For example, businesses that reach customers primarily through the internet may enjoy saving on other traditional expenses such as office rent, sales for salaries, printing and postage. And if you look at the bargaining power of buyer, internet and wireless technology may increase buyer power by providing consumers with more information to make buying decisions and by lowering switching costs. But actually, these uh, technologies may also suppress the power of traditional buyer channel that have concentrated buying power in the hand of a few. So, giving buyers new ways to access seller. Okay, to sort out these differences, let first distinguish between two types of buyer, the end user and buyer channel intermediaries. So, end user are the final customers in a distribution channel. So, internet sales activity that is level B2C. Uh, that is business to consumer is concerned with end user. So basically, uh, internet is likely to increase the power of this buyer for several reasons. Okay, so uh, in contrast, the bargaining power of distribution channel buyers may decrease because of internet. So buyer channel intermediaries are the wholesaler, distributor, or retailer who serve as intermediaries between manufacturer and end user. And uh, bargaining power of supplier, use of the internet and digital technologies to speed up and streamline the process of acquiring supply is already benefiting many sectors of the economy. But uh, if you look at the net effect of the internet on supplier power, we depend on the nature of competition in a given industry. And the trade of substitute. Along with traditional marketplace, the internet has created a new marketplace and a new channel. So, uh, you can see that the trade of substitute is heightened because the internet introduced new ways to accomplish the same tasks. And uh, the intensity of competitive rivalry, internet creates more tools and means for competing. So, rivalry among competitors is likely to be more intense so only those competitors that can use digital technologies and the web to give themselves a distinct image to create unique product offering or provide faster smarter cheaper services are likely to capture greater advantage eh, or greater profitability with the new technology